All right, let's keep going. Um, so we're going to... Max has got arrested in Kazakhstan because everyone gets arrested in Kazakhstan. Um, we're just going to start inspiring one of our people up. Try and get everyone up towards 25 loyalty. Hopefully Max will be released soon because it'll help with our admin cap. I think he gets released in... Ju yep, relatively soon. So that'll help. We, our Inspire is failing. Victor 3, so we're going to have another crashed alien soon. We finished Deep Space Propulsion, which is great. Uh, what do I want next? I've done Arrival Economics. I think I want Mass Drivers, because this leads to uh, Mining. And we've got Outpost Core under Research. And what we want to make sure is you finish Outpost Core. This is the ability to plant bases before mission to the moon lands, because you want to be able to grab some territory on the moon if there's any good territory. Mission to Blah technologies are the gateways that unlock the ability for everyone to go and explore that object. So uh, mission to the moon lets everyone go and explore the moon, mission to Mars, etc., etc., mission to the inner planets, outer planets, all of that fun stuff. So that should complete in August. There's a reason I'm not pushing it. It's because I want time to get um, Outpost Core done first. I'm happy putting only a third of my research into my personal stuff and pushing the rest of the global tech first, just because I'd like to get a move on. There's our crashed uh, UFO in Cote d'Ivoire. So we will go and recon that in a minute. I'm looking forward to my guy releasing, because that'll improve this. There we are, we're up to 183. So back in action. No one can level up yet. And there are no more organizations available. I'm just waiting for some to become available so that I can buy them and get the stats and points I need to help drive my... There we are. Okay, a bunch of new spawned. Middle of the month, roughly. So what have we got? We've got Unity, Knowledge. There's one Persuasion there, so that'll give us one admin, one cap on managing stuff. These look like pretty weak, but also pretty cheap organizations. So what do we want first? We definitely want this one on whoever is going to be doing the um, purges and crackdowns. Is there a reason you can't do it? Oh, because it costs two stars, and you currently have zero stars, Max. You are terrible at admin. Uh, we're going to have to get you some admin points. Someone else will have to do it in the meantime. So uh, I guess it's Sabitha in the meantime, but you, again, don't have the administrative capacity. So it's going to have to be someone who's not particularly suited. They're just going to have to hold on to it for the point of holding on to it. I think Vincenar's got the admin points to hold on to. Useful, perhaps, to give Vincenar that. And we may also give him... Regulus isn't particularly good. Plus 4% knowledge is okay, but not for minus 6 monthly income and whatnot. Sagittarius is fine. It's not particularly good, but it's fine. Like, let's just attach that there. And then Argos Advertising, plus 3% unity, plus 5 influence in exchange for minus 1 money, and it gives you public campaign. Does anyone not have public campaign yet? Max does not. You do. I'm tempted to buy this for Nero and then transfer it to Max once he's got a... Um, once he's got... Um, admin cap. So there we are. That's um, a little bit of a boost, but not much. We're at 194 out of 183. That's a bit of a negative. Probably going to need to do a little bit more leveling and research in order to clean things up. But we're in okay shape. Um, I can't control 20th Guards. 20th Guards belongs to the Resistance, so I'd really like them to bring that out. And we need to jump forward in time. So I'm going to um, play a few rounds. I'm going to send Max to recon that alien site, as you would expect. At some point, I want to research alien origin, but I'm just getting the basic technology sorted first. Uh, we're going to, as you can see, the United States is getting less sectarian. The economy is still shrinking, but very, very, very slowly. Um, at this rate, we'll have like a 1% contraction per year, which is a recession, but not a super bad one. But we're, during that time, we're solving, we're, we're fixing everything else. Um, tech level's going up. Uh, political polarization is really bad, but we're going to improve it. Opinion is really, really good for us. We're slowly, slowly dragging down inequality, like really slowly, like 0.1 per year, but we'll get there. Um, and as we get bonuses, 
will be able to improve that as well. But once I fix this, and I want to fix this first, it's also increasing the, the fastest. Because in a year, this will be four, the year after will be five, and then we can really dial down this 28% unity investment, spread it over the economy, welfare, knowledge, and a little bit to the military too, uh, in order to get the United States humming. We might even divert a little more spending from the military to everything else. So there we are. I'm going to jump forward in time a bit, probably, while I manage uh, manage nations and secure the, my position. And I will come back probably around the time... Well, I don't know when I'll come back. When something interesting is happening. Now, as you can see, um, the servants have allied Kazakhstan to the United Kingdom, putting it under their nuclear umbrella. So there is only one solution to this problem. We're going to spam public opinion in Kazakhstan and launch... I think like the ninth coup in Kazakhstan for this game, um, in order to eliminate the United Kingdom alliance and open up Kazakhstan to invasion. And there you go. Um, successful coup in Kazakhstan, which gives us both of the opinion points. Now this is going to only be temporary. Kazakhstan is too... Uh, oh, we got alien abductions in Niger. Okay, we're gonna need to send someone to have a look at that. Um, this is only gonna be temporary. At the end of the day, Kazakhstan has is too vulnerable to coups and is too valuable. The AI is going to be attracted to it like moth to a flame. Um, all we can do is try and hold it together long enough, long enough that uh, it isn't taken over. So all I can think of doing is temp and I hate doing this. I hate the spoils for anything more than like the shortest periods of time ever, but. What I'm thinking of doing is giving the oligarchs what they want in terms of spoils percentage, which I think is that, just over 50%, putting the rest into mission control, and using that to declare uh, rivalry on Russia and the United States, which will then open it up. We can use Russia to declare... Um, we can use Russia to declare war. We only have one Russian army, so we can only really make it work once uh, the United States allies, which I think will be in August. Um, and then we can launch the invasion of Kazakhstan, basically by mutual consent. And the reason we're going to do that is because then that will absorb Kazakhstan into um, a newly formed Eurasian Union. So this will cease to be Russia, it'll become the Eurasian Union, and that'll bring the control point cap down, because at the moment we are uncomfortably over. The other thing I was going to say is that Nero Deli um, has been replaced with Nero II. Um, Nero the first was high persuasion, not so much anything else. Nero the second is a tech mogul who's good at administration, science, a little bit of persuasion, um, and is important because he's got hostile takeover, which is how we're going to take organizations off other agents, and it uses the admin stat. He boosts our overall um, levels more, and this administration science um, eventually command spread makes him pretty good at advising nations. Eventually, we're going to want to attach one counselor probably permanently to the United States to boost it up. Not so much in the early game, but certainly eventually. And he can get some use, looks like he can get some useful extra missions, or someone can, by grabbing Theseus investigation. So um, he's probably a good pickup. We can also pick up the United UN Office for Outer Space Affairs. What does that give us? Plus 3% funding, 2% space flight, 5% space science, 2% mining, science. This is not really that good for the cost. This is not that good for the cost. It's okay. It's not that good for the cost. Um, none of these are particularly amazing. Thesis investigations is good if someone is going to have to be doing investigation-based missions. So who is going to be doing investigation-based missions? I guess... Uh, Sabitha, because she's doing um, crackdowns occasionally. We can finally put a admin point on our commando, and that means he can pick up uh, an ability from somewhere. I've also got some unassigned organizations that I should allocate. Uh, she probably wants to pick up Sagittarius. She can also pick up uh, Argos Advertising, just as a good place to store it. Do I want Regulus? 
plus minus six money per month for plus four percent knowledge per month. I mean, it's not amazing. It's also not super expensive at 66. I'm not sure I can afford it right now though, because if a really expensive one comes up, I want to have the stuff available to buy it. What I really want is I could allocate um, a mission enabling one to max, and I will get to that point eventually. But there we are. We've refreshed. We've refreshed our council a little bit. The quick learner is a 20% faster leveling, which will mean he will be able to catch up. He's young, so he will probably live the entire game. He's got okay, pretty mediocre, but okay resource incomes, but good stats. He'll level quickly, and importantly, if we locate any enemy councillors um, who have good orgs, Nero the second will be able to steal them. And because someone has uh, completed re uh, Mission to the Moon, we can launch a Prospector Probe. It will get there relatively soon. It will tell us what the resources at the various sites are, and then we'll be able to choose where we establish a base. I have decided to do... I've used my um, success in this tech to push space mining and refining, because that's obviously critical. Uh, space mining and refining is where you get all of your resources that aren't produced on Earth. You have to start producing resources in space if you want to build up a space economy. So really no other option. So I'm pushing that research just in case no one else does. Okay, we've completed the Investigate Alien Abductions objectives. We are at war. Our investigator has confirmed that multiple disappearances have taken place. The human disappearances include people well outside the profile of missing person reports. Until we learn otherwise, we must assume they are being deliberately targeted by our alien visitors and our worst fears are being realised. We have no leads as to where the abductees may have been taken or how to stop them. All we can do is continue to investigate. Research alien methods when you have a chance. Uh, we will research alien methods eventually. I do want to complete management research, uh, arrival economic space mining. All of this is important. Um, cool, someone's doing nuclear fission in space. That's also a good technology to have. It'll be basically necessary if we're going to do anything on Mars. Great, so we can now research alien methods. Alien methods is very, very cheap. Um, so what does that allow us to do? Allows factions to detect alien contact with humans. Now that's really cheap. So I'm tempted to temporarily turn that off and finish that. Because that's we can, we can afford to jump that up a little bit. Uh, it'll move the story along. It'll let us detect alien activity on the planet a little bit better. Uh, yes, I know I'm mostly focused on spreading my geopolitical influence. Uh, that's part of the game. Look, I'm fixing the United States, okay? Very slowly fixing the US. Lowering inequality, uh, uh, reducing polarization. The economy was stabilizing. Looks like it needs a little bit more help. Um, I need to get Nero the second over there to advise them to help out with all that. But... um. Yeah, we're doing okay, but we need to remember that the aliens do exist. Like, they're out there, they're sending ships. Uh, we can't ignore them forever. Okay, our probe has arrived at Luna, and we get to judge the moon. So, what have we got? This does not look like... Now, the resources at, the, um, at every location are randomly generated every game. What you're really looking for is a good distribution. Uh, you're going to need a little bit of everything to make your resources work. In particular, you're going to need water income from somewhere, you're going to need fissiles from somewhere, and you're going to need uh, base metals from somewhere. You're going to need everything. But of all of these, Shackleton Crater and Tycho Crater look like they've got some value. Um, eight fissile income is something. Uh, and nine water income is something. The idea is you want to have enough resources that you don't have to ship stuff from Earth in order to make your construction work. But at the same time, you don't want to overdo it on bases on the moon because um, Mars bases will be coming along and Mars bases are generally much more productive. That said, I can always sell them later. So it costs nine boost to land, uh, land a location. And the question is, what do I take first? Um, now, fissiles are more valuable, but water is really heavy. If you need to lift water into orbit in order to sustain yourself, then you're going to have a bad time. So getting some production of water on the board is probably a good idea. I'm tempted to claim Shackleton Crater. It also has the best base metal output. It has no volatiles. It has no nobles, no fizzles. The moon in this version has zero nobles at all. So no one's going to have a fun time running themselves just off the moon. But we're going to land ourselves at Shackleton Crater. It'll take 35 days. And all we're doing this for is to claim the location. Laying the groundwork. 
So we now have this little location being uh, created. We don't have uh, the boost to lift a mining module or power generators or anything. Um, our boost income is probably better than anyone else's, but still not very good at uh, about 50 a year. Um, and we will need at least that in order to lift stuff up to the moon if we don't get other techs. So there we are. We've claimed a location. The only other one here that really, really interests me at all is this one, Tycho Crater with the eight fissiles. Um, other than that, none of this really interests me straight out, and I'd probably want to wait for Mars. But there we are. Uh, we've sent a base location to the moon. This claims this location. No one else can take it from us. Uh, life is good, and this emphasizes why there is a need for as much boost income as possible early on. Oh, nice. We've also got third special forces group. And I'm pretty sure only... We must have government which our operative doesn't. So if we pick up US Special Forces Group, it's it's good, but it means um, the people that we can give it to aren't the best commanders in the first place. I think, I, I think it's basically just Vincenar. But I'm going to pick it up because the ops income there is very, very good. Um, and we could maybe do something with Vincenar later on, but I just want to hold on to that org just to increase that monthly ops income just that little bit more. So there we are, good pickup. Okay, so the date has ticked over. It is now September 1st, 2023. That means that the cooldown on relationship changes between the United States and Russia has finished. And since we control both Russia and the United States, there's a 100% chance of declaring an alliance. And so the world's strangest alliance is now agreed. Moscow and Washington DC are now on the same side, believe it or not, uh, which means things can start to move apace. Fantastic. Okay, so Russia is in a bit of a pickle at GameStart. Its, uh, its economy is in a sh bit of a shambles. Uh, its society and economy, look, they, they could be better. They could, they could be better. So we need to improve those a little bit. But first, that means finishing... Uh, absorbing Kazakhstan in order to resolve this command point issue. And then we're going to have to do something about the war in Ukraine. So the United States is in a position to help with all of that. So let's first of all go to Kazakhstan and rival the uh, Russians. Done. Okay, so this now allows Russia to declare war on uh, Kazakhstan without issue. So we'll get Max. Max can go investigate some aliens. Nero II can set national policy in Russia, which will allow for a declaration of war. Um, and the United States can start shipping troops over to Russia. I don't think we'll need too many US divisions to make this work. The US has complete naval superiority, so within 25 days, most of these divisions should be able to deploy by sea. So we'll send the 2nd Marine, uh, the, so we'll send 2nd Marine, 3rd ID, and 1st Armoured. And they can link up with, um, they can link up with, what have we got, 1st Guards Tank? Yeah, 1st Guards Tank. Uh, really, that uh, that division is probably preferring this, the, the divisions of 1st Guards Tank Army are probably preferring this alternative timeline. We'll send 1st Marine just for a little bit of extra support. And then that can uh, arrange for a quick, hopefully, conquest of Kazakhstan. Which And then once we uh, have that in, in order to make sure we don't feel terrible about ourselves, we'll absorb some of the periphery states into Russia. And then we'll jump ahead on trying to make Russia a scientifically advanced, democratic, pluralistic Eurasian Union because otherwise it just wouldn't feel right. All right, Vincenar, what else can you do? Probably complete our public opinion boosting in Russia, which is Spike almost out. maxed out. At your service. What's the up? And I can just, if we can just do some investigate counselors, I just want to find a counselor who has orgs that we can maybe take over using the hostile takeover action. That would be really handy. No one is ready for... Actually, no, someone is ready for level up. Always happy to do that. So you're at three out of six. Great. So you've got a little bit of capacity. Uh, you don't have government, unfortunately, and it will cost 20 XP and 100 influence in order to get it for you. But eventually, we're going to need more government uh, agents because a lot of the good organizations in the game are either criminal or government, and you need the appropriate tag to recruit them. Let's go. I think we had a breakthrough. So we're inspiring well, that's working. I 
I have new information. Project complete. Alien methods. Okay, so we can now detect alien contacts with humans, which gives us more things to chase down. Now, alien visitors appear to be working their way up the food chain. Early disappearances were animals, went unnoticed. Then they moved on to humans. Early victims are random. Uh, most recent inc uh, victims have been rich, influential, and powerful. They're not abducting humans for food or fun. They want people who are important. And they're starting to resurface. Media and political figures who should know better are celebrating. This is good news. It is not. The aliens went to enormous trouble to kidnap these people, and they're returning them for a reason. And it can't be anything good. I love humanity first. They're so paranoid. All right, so we can now research, purify the Earth, and set our goals. Now... Set our goals. Where is set our goals? I'm not sure if it's available just yet. Oh, no, set our goals is the objective for this one. Purify the Earth. So, we reach an agreement on how best to drive the aliens away for good. Every faction that you can play has a tech like this. And it represents the moment where you understand a little bit more about the aliens and you sort of reach the decision point on roughly how you're going to deal with the with the event, basically. Um, it's a good tech to do. It costs different amounts for different factions, depending on how politically and socially complex the ideas, unless they've changed this since the beta, um, different factions who have different levels of complexity, different levels of ideas, more research points accordingly. So as you can imagine, just guessing ahead, Humanity First is going to have a particular view. It's going to be pretty simple. So Purify the Earth is only 2,000 points to research. So we're going to go really heavily in trying to get that done. That should be finished by March. Once Arrival Economics is done, we could even uh, take emphasis off this slot temporarily to finish this and then make up for it by slowing down projects for a while and focusing on global research. We're going to want space mining and refining done sooner rather than later, though. All right, so here is the set national policy menu. So we can declare war on any of our rivals that we don't have a shared ally with. So our options at the moment are Ireland, Georgia, and Kazakhstan. Obviously, we are going to go to Kazakhstan. Russia is asking the United States to join. US will accept. And bang, Russia and the United States are now in a war against Kazakhstan, which we also control, but, you know, the world doesn't have to know that. It just knows that there is a government in Kazakhstan, and it declared Russia as its rival. It said mean things about Russia, and we, who control Russia, have accepted that the correct response to them saying those mean things is to invade. You know, because... Obviously, that is the correct response. Uh, some new orgs have arrived. Let's have a look at what we've got going here. Steel project, public campaign, increase espionage. So this is good for our espionage bot. So Max would be a good, good pick, except he doesn't have the points for it, which is unfortunate. Max just doesn't have the admin points yet. The one person who does have the points is Nero. Now, Nero is not going to make particularly good use of any of these statistics, but I could buy these things just to add them on. There's also a three star here for 597 money, which would give plus four monthly income of uh, ops, which would increase it by about 30% and give plus three espionage. So I could give plus five espionage to someone. Unfortunately, Vincenar doesn't have any useful um, espionage missions. Otherwise, he'd be the obvious go-to. But I think for the moment, just collecting these orgs is probably a good idea. There's, nothing, there's no negative in that one. And there's no negative in this one. So while they cost money to buy, I'm happy to pick them up. Trajan Engineering Group just gives you a little bit of a bonus there. I, I don't think that's worth it. I mean, I could buy it, it's incredibly cheap, but I'm probably just going to get rid of it later. So what I might do for the moment is I might just, I might add it on, it's only 50, but I'm probably going to sell it later on. For a loss of like a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of money. So there we go. Uh, Nero now has Espionage 7, which is actually moderately respectable. No missions to, to do with it, but he's good to hold on to those organisations for the moment, and they do boost our income considerably. All right, we're going to keep... Uh, there's still no targets for hostile takeover, which means the AI doesn't have particularly good orgs that we have identified yet. 
So we're going to keep scouting our counselors. Nero the second, we're going to put him on advise duty in the United States, which will give a bonus. So advise, um, you give a 1% bonus to GDP calculation for your admin, so up to a 25% boost. He'll give a 6%, a 6% boost to science from his science, um, and a small and a point, uh, a small bonus to uh, military tech. I'll check what that bonus is per command. So he's not going to give much of a bonus to the U.S. military. But he is going to increase GDP and science output by 6%. That's Ready. probably useful. Vincenar. I don't know what Vincenar needs to be doing. I might do some surveillance operations in Europe. And then go back to public opinion boosting. I think just locking down Russian public opinion is about all we need to do, really. I don't think I changed their mind. Uh, we'll make that assignment permanent until we change it, and as soon as the U.S. troops arrive, we'll send them all into Kazakhstan. Person of interest surveyed. Okay, so we've identified a counselor who works for the servants. Okay, a hacker has taken control of a major payload. They've sent us a threatening message. So we can no not negotiate with criminals, in which case we lose three boost. That sucks. Uh, we can pay them money, and then we either save the boost 70% chance, or 30% we just lose it anyway. And we can back we're going to backtrace their identity. <laughs> After receiving a video of their sister being held at one of our black sites, the hacker becomes more cooperative. We are back in control. Okay, so that cost us five ops to oh, save three boost. I'm happy with that because we didn't negotiate with terrorists by, by doing vaguely terrorist things. Um, but the boost is what we need right now. Especially when someone drops mission to the moon. Which we now... Uh, not mission to the moon, mission to Mars. We want to be ready. So there we are. We have founded the first base on the moon. It doesn't do anything yet. It just costs upkeep because we don't have any mining happening there. Um, but we have done it. We've, we've taken the first location. No one else has come to the moon yet. Now we could claim this 8 fissile site which would allow us to um, uh, claim it, but that slows down getting the first mine down. So it's an interesting it's an interesting trade-off. I'm kind of tempted to grab this location, but only once I know what's on Mars. It's a bit of a gamble. I'll think about it a little bit longer. For the moment, I won't touch it. Uh, we haven't got mining yet, so and until we have mining, that doesn't really have particular value. So all good. Okay, we have all of our armies here. We can use the deploy armies. You can either send them individually or all of your armies in a stack as a group. Deploy armies as a group, and we'll just move to the capital. Capital marked by this little icon here. You take the capital. It's all over Red Rover, and their government is thrown out, and the war is done. So we're sending in one Russian division and a whole bunch of American divisions. And there's Soren Van Wyck being a uh, cynical capitalist again, which is fantastic. Okay, so... What do we want next? Um, advanced chemical rocketry, I think. I think advanced chemical rocketry is a good pickup. Space mining and refining is obviously very important. That'll be finished in early 2024. And advanced chemical, uh, chemical rocketry, which allows us to get some boost going, will be finished in March. I'm happy with that. Reporting in. Do, do, do. Vincenar. Oh, Vincenar can go get us a non-aggression pact with the um with the resistance. That'd be great. And I'm going to keep investigating unknown counselors until I find someone who has an org that I can steal. Okay. What's the resistance got? They got more money than me. They got less influence than me. They got much less boost. They have some useful orgs. I have some useful orgs. Okay, all right. Do I want anything from them? Templin Institute's okay. Aegis is okay. Winford Media is okay. 
Is there anything on my side that's terrible? I remember there was one of these that wasn't very good. Trajan Engineering wasn't very good. I want a non-aggression pact. Then how much for... Aegis Defense looks kind of good, just to boost command. Wolfhound is... a lot of these are good. Alright, leave this with me, I'm going to make a trade. Okay, looks like our military units have arrived, and I bought some Orcs from, and a non-aggression pact from the Resistance, which is great. We'll have a look at Diplomacy later on, but right now it looks like all of our divisions have arrived. And in Terra Invicta, uh, do we want to impose sanctions on Syria? Or, I'm going to just do nothing with Syria. Who who controls Syria? I don't, I don't need to make it poorer. No one controls Syria. I don't need to make it poorer. Um, so every province can defend itself uh, to an extent determined by a whole bunch of factors. Uh, terrain, military tech, cohesion, unrest, etc. But driving five divisions, including four American units, into Kazakhstan is probably going to be too much for the... Defenders, we should be able to take it over relatively quickly. Good arrival markets has been unlocked. We're going to want that. Jeez, we need so much research done. That's going to unlock a whole bunch more orgs for us to buy on a regular basis. Uh, do I want 4% knowledge? Do I want 2% knowledge? Do I want Aegis Defense Division? What I really want is for Max to get to 20 so I can equip Aegis Defense, which will give him plus 2 command, uh, make him a respectable 8, although really I want to get him to 25 before long. The other option is, where is Nero the second? Because if I drop one of these from Nero the second, I can put this on and that gives the United States a temporary bonus there. I think for the moment I'm going to do this. I'm going to unequip, I'm going to equip, and equip. There we are. That will come into effect next phase, and then we can fit this tiny, tiny bonus to knowledge in maybe. I mean it costs money. Probably not worth it for 2% knowledge. Okay, there we are. So Kazakhstan has been conquered, which has done a lot to help with bring down our control point issue. Um, it will actually lower our boost, because now we have to split Kazakhstan's boost um, with the uh, other people who control control points in Russia. But you can see the Eurasian Union is growing, um, and that can only be a good thing for our command point limit, if nothing else. Now the next problem is going to be resolving the Ukraine war, and then also considering whether we throw... whether we try and throw the Protectorate out of Belarus. That's another option available to us. Uh, do we throw the servants out of Georgia? We'd probably need to break their alliance with the UK first. Azerbaijan and the Protectorate has allies in... Yeah, so we'd need to stage coups or something to break up the alliances if we're going to throw them out of here. But I'm just thinking if we can blob Russia a little bit and then turn it into like a, a closer ally of the United States, that's a pretty good option for us in terms of cementing our power. And it's also very different to the previous run we did where we were EU focused. This is instead Russia, United States, weird dual alliance focused. Let's check the priorities here are okay. I really want to increase mission control. I, I want everything in Russia really. Anyway, that'll that'll do for the moment. Acknowledged. Awesome. All right, leave with me. Look, we're just not going to talk about this, okay? We're just we're, we're just going to move on um, from what was the correct strategic move to consolidate the position to throw the alien-loving surrender monkeys out of Kiev because the Ukrainian people will never surrender to the aliens or should never be led by a government which would betray them to the aliens which is why it was necessary for the united states marines to land in kiev 
because when you're playing humanity first, there really can be no peace for either the Xenos or those who give them shelter and succor, and the Protectorate and the Servants are the number two on the hit list. So we've kudetard them out of Turkmenistan. Now, the answer as to how we deal with the fact that we are now over limit again because of this is obviously, well, you know which way this is going. We're going to declare a rivalry on Russia as Turkmenistan. The new government has declared that Moscow are a bunch of idiots, and their new American allies are, of course, terrible people. We'll just move this big blob of American and Russian troops over here, and then, uh, you know, things will happen, and the shape of the geography in this region will change, and this little 205 number will go down. Nothing to see here. Like I said, no peace for the Xenos lovers, and they did send us an insult after all. So the big blob of US and Russian forces travels on. We'll head out to uh, what used to be Kazakhstan and then move south into Turkmenistan. Again, we've uh, thrown out another source of protectorate power, and by expanding and then locking it into Russia, we make it less likely that they'll be able to use coups or whatnot to recover in return. Um, we're not going to touch Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan is uh, run by the resistance, who are our allies, who we have a non-aggression pact with. All I'm doing is chasing down sources of servant and protectorate power, preferably without getting involved in the big blob of protectorate power that is Pakistan, most of Southeast Asia, and now they're fighting over India with Project Exodus. I really hope that Exodus gets the executive slot, not the protectorate. Uh, China remains empty, and for the first time in... Uh, I've played a couple of games of this in the demo... Um, it's unusual to see the Protectorate doing this well. Usually it's the Servants who are the big bad, and they may still become the big bad. They now have monopoly control over the United Kingdom. But it seems to be the, the Protectorate, the Surrender Monkeys, who are um, taking over more countries than anyone else. Although the Servants... No, the Servants have not broken into South America. Brazil is still very much uh, their territory, the Initiative's territory, rather. Okay. I will keep going and clean up the former collaborationist territory of Turkmenistan. Okay, and there we go. Space mining and refining is done. So, the following projects may unlock for research in the future. Outpost mining complex. That's what we need. Outpost mining complex is what lets you mine resources in space, including water, critically. And then industrialization of space is what lets you get construction locations in space. All of which is very, very, very good. Um, what else do we want to research? Jesus, there's so much that we want to grab. Um, arrival domestic politics is useful. All of that is useful. Ad Astro is eventually useful. Um, biotechnology is useful for um, arrival psychology and for cybernetics. High energy lasers, uh, yes. Electrothermal propulsion. Electromagnetic propulsion. All of this is important. Principles of space warfare is a good one to pick up early. Photonic computing. Geez, you want all the technologies in the game early on. You really do. So, what I really want is this. Mission to inner planets, which I need advanced heat management concepts. So let's grab advanced heat management concepts. The AI probably won't, and I consider it important. So there we go. We're not rushing Mars, but we are trying to get space mining in play. And uh, don't ask any questions about why I'm improving public opinion in Belarus. I have no ambitions on the territory of Belarus. I'm just trying to win public support away from the terrible, evil protectorate. Okay, outpost mining complex is available to research. Um, geez, we have so much we want to research. Um, I think that has to get a priority. So what we're going to do is we're going to lower the priority on that. We're going to finish... We're going to finish Purify the Earth and Advanced Chemical Rockets, and then we're going to spam out Outpost Mining Complex. And then my voice is going, so I may finish this recording session. Alright, so Russia has just taken control of Turkmenistan. Uh, Russia now has enough Eurasian territory that is no longer Russia. It is now the Eurasian Union. The, it's no longer just Russia. Russia is part of it, but these other nations are now joined in a union structure. 
The one thing I will say about allying the United States and going to war, in Terra Invicta, uh, winning fast, victorious wars is a good way to increase national cohesion. Um, fighting and losing them is a bad way to increase cohesion. So you remember, one of the things we wanted to solve in the United States was political polarization. We're investing an awful lot of resources, in fact, in trying to drag the US towards that five middle mark. Well, the US has just won a bunch of wars uh, alongside Russia, and the population are rallying around the flag as a result. So in response to fighting these campaigns, which I presume that the White House is selling as necessary to throw out people who literally want to surrender to the aliens um, that our government is convinced are evil. After all, 82% of Americans think that all aliens should be destroyed. Well, you can see why society would have something to rally around. Who cares what your opinion on healthcare policy or emission standards happens to be, although the government has eliminated corruption almost entirely, um, everyone agrees on destroying the aliens and that is exactly what the government is doing and as a result American society is becoming more unified. We're getting closer and closer to the point where I can stop investing so much money in unity and instead direct it into the economy, welfare and importantly accelerating military development. In fact I may even start to take the edge off now increasing military spending to about 12% of, uh, 11% of GDP and also increasing economic spending slightly because I want to get GDP which is still very 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 slowly trending down I want to drag that and start trending that up instead meanwhile all these troops for no reason whatsoever are going to start the long redeployment towards the borders of Belarus you know for no reason and as if to celebrate the newfound unity of the American people behind the wholesome goal of destroying alien life, we've completed the Purify the Earth project. We've been fighting back for some time, doing all that we can to protect the race from an invasion that is, shows no sign of slowing down. But playing defense indefinitely is not a long-term solution, especially when other factions on Earth want to throw in the towel. It's time to play offense before it's too late, and at last we've worked out exactly how we're going to do that. This increases our capacity to manage control points, so we now have 230 capacity instead of 196. We're now able to expand again, safely, um, so we're definitely going to do that. Our workers also spun off a new organization, the Executioners, which is now available in our faction pool, grants the following resources, 100 influence. So we complete set our goals. There was a lot of disagreement on this one. Do we fight the aliens on Earth or in space? Do we focus on the aliens or on collaborators? And how do we get rid of the invaders for good? Notice that all the disagreement is over method, not the final goal. Humanity first, man. Without knowing more, there are no easy answers, but here's our best guess. We investigate the alien abductions, figure out what they're trying to accomplish, and a way to sabotage their plans. We get samples of their technology and analyze them for weaknesses, and we then exploit those weaknesses to drive the aliens from Earth and make sure they don't come back. Easy to say, hard to do. The one thing everyone agrees on though, we want to make damn sure the aliens aren't coming back. We get rid of them, whatever it takes. So there you are. We've set our objectives, relatively simple. Um, and what we can go do is we can go to, to max, we can go to unassigned orgs, and we now have the executioners. The executioners are amazing. They give plus five espionage, plus 10 command. They pay for themselves in terms of administration because they add three admin while costing three. They add 10 security, plus 10% military research, plus 10% military science research, so 10% military investment, and plus 10% military science research. They are, in other words, fantastic. They also give plus six marsh, um, ops per month, which will increase our income by about 25%. So with that, max goes up, Well, he will eventually go up to a command of 18, much, much closer to the limit of um, 2025. Yeah, it's 25. Um, so that puts us in a good position. Meanwhile, we've got people who are moving into the Baltic states and Belarus, trying to dig out alien influence, take over those control points, and then merge them with the Eurasian Union. Good position to be in. We'll just play a little bit more of this, see how it finishes up, and then we're probably going to close out the episode because we've declared our objectives, and that seems like a good place to end it. And as if to confirm we were onto something, we've now completed the investigate return abductees objective, and as a result, have discovered the following. 
It's as bad as we feared. Our counsellors have independently confirmed the returned abduction victims are now spying on local government, military and police affairs. None of them had previously previously any interest in history or uh, interest in or history of espionage. Now all of a sudden they're conducting surveillance, leaving dead drops and cooperating with other abductees. We've managed to intercept and detain several abductees in the middle of their missions. Even when caught red-handed, they deny all involvement with the kind of intensity you'd expect from a hardened operative. Something has changed. These teenagers, office workers and farm hands into spies, terrorists and agitators, but what? The aliens are infiltrating society, using their abduction victims as pawns. We need to investigate their patterns of behaviour and learn what they are attempting to accomplish. So that's uh, that's reasonably foreboding. And there we are. Okay, so we've grabbed full, uh, we've purged and um, whatnot our way without invading into the Baltic states and Belarus. So what we will do next, and I'm probably going to cut it at this point, is again to save on control points. Um, we're probably going to United Kingdom and assert. Okay, that's that's just the that's just the pro aliens cutting ties with these states now that we've taken control of them. Um, what we will try and do is uh, we'll bring the Baltic states out of the European Union and join them with the Eurasian Federation. Uh, just to make that more efficient, I, I'm sorry, Baltic states. I promise we're going to make we're going to make a Russia, which is like nine level nine democracy. We're going to try and get Russia to a better democracy score than the European states. Although the servants have already brought the UK down. Oh no, the UK is doing okay. It's um it's France, which is teetering on the brink of downgrading in terms of its democracy, and Italy already has. Um, Meanwhile, we're about to lift, hopefully, the United States above the Magic 8 mark from flawed democracy into full democracy, as far as the game is concerned. And we're still very popular there. 4.3. Fantastic. So, we'll absorb... Next episode, we will absorb these states. We will consider where else we can keep expanding. Eventually, we probably want to try and get rid of this control point within the Eurasian Union, so we have three out of four in Russia, and then we want to pick our next major expansion point. I've noticed that... Um, the Protectorate has started breaking into Canada. That's not a good thing. If they do eventually throw out the Resistance, we'll need to move in. Until then, we're going to hope the Resistance can hold on to these two. And in Mexico, Resistance has uh, been cracked down. So this suggests maybe they abandoned the state, in which case someone else may move into Mexico and we may need to move in in response. So that's that. So this episode, we've achieved a lot. Uh, we've set our objectives. Uh, we've got the Executioners. Russia has expanded into the Eurasian Union, uh, and we're slowly shaping it into something that's a little bit more useful. I just kind of need to be able to control more of the budget in order to bring inequality down and to keep driving uh, democracy up. Because at the moment, the Protectorate is spending all their money on spoils and mission control, uh, which is making it hard to run a functional economy. That said, we will get some good MC out of Russia, uh, now the Eurasian Union. So that's all something to work with. And of course, our counselors are continuing to level up, which is always a good thing. Even our quick, our quick learners have already leveled up. Great. So, and we're starting to accumulate more orcs, which is fantastic. Uh, we've done some good scientific research. We have mining technology now. We're doing Xenology Lab, Ad Astra, and Advanced Heat Management con um, Concepts, while another faction, Exodus, is pushing mission to Mars. Exodus loves pushing exploration tech, so this should surprise nobody. Awesome. Hope you've enjoyed the episode, and I'll see you all again soon.